What's going on everybody? It's your boy Blue here. Once again, we're doing a Blue's Budget Battle Brew video. I did mention before that for the next couple weeks I'll be doing these just to get them out of the way at the beginning of the year. And then the plan is, is that for my Kraken Packs videos, my hope is that I pull a couple things I need to do some update videos for some of my past personal commander decks. And then I can start working on some new commander decks to show you all for some builds. Uh, but as it goes, we got to do some Blues Budget Brews just to get through. So this week we are starting with a... This one's more of a beginner slash starter deck, for or for somebody who really likes dragons. Uh, this deck is called Dracarys. Yes, after the Game of Thrones, it's a uh, it's basically just dragon tribal, and it's here to teach you certain aspects of how to work magic in general. So let's go over the deck. I'll do a small, very small upgrade section to show you another way to play, and then we'll get out of here. So let's get started. All right. So, let me zoom out a little bit here. So, again, it's Dragon Tribal. <laughs> so, there are no one converted mana cost or mana value dragons. So, we have to go start off on two converted mana costs. So, Dragon Lord Servant. So, it's a two to cast, one three. So, at least it has a nice toughness to block for you if you need it. And it makes your dragon spells cost one less to cast. That is absolutely going to be needed in this deck. Just because, as you know, dragons are expensive. So, we put four of them in there so you can start off right. So, they can block... And they give you a little bit of reduction in cost. Uh, the three drop is a dragon egg. Why? Because, well, monetary value says the only three drop I could find to fit into the budget will be dragon egg. So it's three to cast for an O2. Has defender. It is a dragon as the egg. And then when it dies, you create a 2-2 red dragon creature with flying. It also has fire breathing, which is basically for every red you pump into it, you can give it plus one plus zero on its power. <laughs> Play a set of those. The four drop, again... Monetary value dictates it has to be these. Furnace Whelp, so it's 4 to cast 2-2 Flyer, and it, it's basically what the Dragon Egg drops. Okay? So it's got Fire Breathing. Uh, we got a 5 drop in here, which I don't normally go too much into on 5 drops with my budget decks, but again, the 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 budget and the the availability of the higher-end ones for the, the converted mana costs dictates we have to go in this direction. So it's 5 to cast for a 5-5 five, five Flying Trampling Haste, and at the beginning of... The end step, Lightning Streaker's owner shuffles it into his or her library. So it just goes back in. It kind of avoids a lot of things unless it dies. Got two of those. Rapacious Dragon's in here. It's the, another five to cast for it. It's a 3-3 three, three flyer. It's in here because when it enters the battlefield, you create two treasure tokens to help kind of alleviate some of that high converter mana cost or mana value, if you will, uh, to help you get things out quicker. Two of those. And then we have a Spark Tug Dragon. It's a 3-3 three, three, three for 5 flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay 3. And then when you do, it deals 3 damage to any target. So basically, it shoots fire at somebody. <laughs> a lightning bolt, if you will. Uh, Scargin Hellkite. It's actually a mythic. It's a 5 to cash 4-4 four, four with Riot. And Riot just says that this creature enters the battlefield with either a plus 1, plus 1 counter or haste. So it can enter the battlefield as a 5-5, five, five, or it can be a 4-4 four, four haste creature. It also has flying. And then it has the ability for 3-1. Uh, it can deal 2 damage, divide any way you choose among 1 or 2 targets. And you can activate the ability only if Skargan has the plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. Okay? <laughs> Demanding Dragon. So another 5 to cast. For, it's a 5-5 five, five flyer. And when it enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage to target opponent unless that player sacrifices a creature. Again, it shoots a fireball at, at your opponent. Volcanic Hel Dragon. It's a 6 to cast. Flying Haste, 4-4. Four, four. So it's basically... So it's 6 to cast, but technically it's... With haste, it's almost like it costs five. Got two of them. And then we've got the OG dragon, Shivan, in here. I put one in there just for shits and giggles, just for a little bit of nostalgia. So it's a 6 cast 5 5 flyer with fire breathing. Uh, we have, uh, for the spell section here, we're going to put in a lot of, I guess, ways to clear the board for early turns because it's going to take you a little while to ramp up to what you need out. So we got some shocks in here for them so that we can make sure that we can clear some of the, the low... Toughness creatures that are cheap to cast. Draconic Roar. So, as an additional cast to... Uh, I don't know why I do that. As an additional cost to cast it, you can reveal a dragon card from your hand, which you should have in your hand. And then it either deals three damage to a creature, or if you reveal a dragon card from... Uh, or control a dragon as you cast it, it deals three damage to that creature's controller. Also, I think... 
When you cast your uh, because there's one that does it where you can do the damage of whatever you revealed as well. Uh, deals three damage to the target creature if you reveal a dragon card or control the dragon. As you cast it, deals three damage to that creature's controller. Okay, so it deals three damage to a creature and then possibly three damage to its controller. It's not the other one. Couldn't remember which one I put in here. Uh, Scorching Dragon Fire. Uh, if you notice, there's a theme here. Almost everything here has dragon theme to it. Uh, it deals three damage to a sort of creature or planeswalker, and if that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, you exile instead of it going to the graveyard for them. Touch of the Void. This one's not dragon themed, but it's three to cast. It doesn't actually happen to be red. It's a red card, but it's the Void, so it has no color. And it deals three damage to a creature or player, and again, if that creature would die, you exile instead. And then Spit Flame. So it's a 3 to cast instant that deals 4 damage to another creature. Again, everything here is to clear the board on your opponent's side because if they're playing a weenie deck, there's no way you're going to survive long enough to get it done. So it deals 4 damage to a creature, and then whenever a dragon enters the battlefield on your control, you may then pay a red. And if you do, you can return it from your graveyard to your hand. And then the rest is all mounds. It's 20 mounds here just to make sure that it plays out correctly. So it's basic. It's really more a beginner deck. Uh, it's to help teach play people how to play more, but... You know, it can actually be made well enough to be competitive in a kitchen table battle of some sort. And then I'm going to also go into a couple of changes you can make to make this deck really shine. It will up the actual monetary cost of this deck, but it will really make the deck shine. So why don't we go ahead and just get right into the upgrade section, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we know that the strategy for this deck is basically just drop dragons on the battlefield, smash face, and then maybe remove some stuff on the board on your opponent's side with direct damage. So we're going to go along with that. All right, so normally what I do is I tell you what to take out when I'm explaining what to do. I'm actually just going to show you the cards that you can replace cards in here with, and you should be able to see the pattern here as to what you're going to remove as you go, because this would take a little while to get done. This isn't just a one-shot. I got every card I needed right off the bat. Uh, unless, of course, you've got money like that, and you're just going to do that. But we're going to start off with some creatures. So normally on the creature side, I normally give you the one you remove and the one you replace, but I'm just going to tell you this. So the idea here is to basically curve out, and curve out just means, you know, you, you have to let, you play a second land, you play a 2 case creature, you play a third land, you play a 3 case creature, and curve out means to just go along the line of how many lands you have put out, so you can put enough stuff out and keep ramping up as you go, okay? So, we're not taking out the Draconic, or the Dragon Lord Servants. That's the first thing. Again, there is no one drop. So I'm going to give you a 2, 3, and 4 converted mana cost creature that you can put in here, and obviously you would take out as you go, so you would take out the dragon eggs for the two, you know, and so forth, and, you know, it'll lower the converter mana cost of the whole deck, the curve, if you will, and it'll improve the deck greatly. So, for the two converter mana cost creature, I'm going to suggest Smoldering Egg. It's a newer card. It transforms into a 4-4 four, four flyer as well. It has that really cool ability that when you play an instant... So, you play instants, eventually it'll flip or transform, if you will, and then when you play instants after it's flipped or transformed, it'll start dealing damage to anything you want. So it's an added bonus of if you sit there and shock something, you get an extra shock out of it. If you sit there and say lightning bolt something, you get a lightning bolt and a shock out of it. So it's a really good card, and especially in a dragon deck, it can work really well, especially if it's a spell slinger style. And this deck will kind of be a half tribal, half spell slinger. The three converted mana costs I'm going to su suggest is a chaos dragon. It's a 4-4 four, four flyer. It has that pesky ability on it that says it can't attack if, you know, you roll a d20 and you're the lower roll. It can attack, but it'll work... Uh, in a pinch, and even if it can't attack, it can sit back and block. So, there is that. The uh, four converter mana cost I'm going to tell you is going to be an either-or. In fact, it can be either-or-end. So, the first one I'm going to mention is mana form Hellkite. It's a Crimson Val mythic that whenever you cast a dragon when it's in play, it creates more dragons. I mean, it's kind of pretty good. Uh, the other four converter mana cost is a Thunderbreak Regent. Again, it's a 4-4 four, four flyer. They uh, they both can be used simultaneously, or you can use one or the other, depending on your budget. Uh, I would suggest using both in any form you can, and putting four copies of each, everything I just suggested in. Again, your budget will dictate what you can do. As far as the spells go, and this, this is where Red really shines, uh, Red has the ability to really put on some pressure and remove a lot of threats cheap. Uh, obviously, you take stuff out like the shocks and stuff like that. But I'm going to mention the four. Uh, I'm going to mention four spells. Show you three that you can switch in for what's already in here, and it'll really ramp up the uh, the speed and ability for this deck to win. So you're going to put in like lightning bolt, one to cast deals three damage to anything. It's staple of all red. Chain lightning is a good one. Chain lightning is also one to cast. It's it's not an instant though. It's a sorcery. That's the only downfall to it, but it really can do some damage too. 
Uh, Wild Slash would replace the Shocks if you need to. It's one to cast. It deals two damage or something. It also makes it so that damage for the turn can't be prevented. It's always a bonus in red because when you're playing at somebody who can prevent damage, it's not often, but when you do, it's kind of a pain in the ass. And the one that I won't show you, but I'll mention, uh, Sarkum's Triumph. Maybe I'll show you it. Uh, it basically is a tutor for dragons. It's three to cast, and you can just go search your library for a dragon and put it in your hand. In a deck that's based on solely dragons, it's really... It's just great. Uh, one enchantment I'll mention will be Dragon's Tempest. I'll have it up there so you can see it's actually really good in a dragon deck, specifically Dragon Tribal. Uh, I think a lot of people who play... Uh, what is it? Or, or dragon or whatever it is. The five the cast, the five color dragon that they play in Commander. Probably use Dragon Tempest a lot. You can use it in 60 card as well. And then, normally with lands, if it's single color, I don't really have a whole lot of options to tell you specifically. Uh, but red has two for once. So the first one's Castle Embereth. It can come into play untapped if you control another mountain. So that's beautiful in a deck like this. And it buffs up your creature's power by one. So... It's a natural because it has everything you need. And it, I think it counts as a mountain. Uh, I don't remember if it counts as a mountain or not. I know it comes into play on tap if you control a mountain. I'll have it up there. You can double check me if you need to. And then the last thing I'm going to mention on the lands is Valakut the Molten Pentacle. So Valakut turns your mountains, because you're going to have a bunch of them, it turns all your mountains into shocks, or not shocks, lightning bolts. Because when you play a mountain past, I think it's five or seven, now you get to deal damage directly to anything you want. So it's a great addition to any mono red deck, but specifically in a deck that already utilizes that kind of a, a, a ability. It's always great. So, And those are the only suggestions I'm going to throw out there for you. It's already going to be a high enough cost because I think the Mana Forge one... Uh, what is it? The uh, the Mana Form Hellkite might be expensive as it is. So. <clears throat> so that's what I got for you this week. It's not really all that exciting, but it, it's something that... You know, I like to go out to show out there for those who are beginning the game that, you know, really like dragons. So uh, if you have any questions or concerns about it, if you want to ask me any questions, I'll have the uh, the contact information up here for you to see. You know, you can go to the Facebook page and contact me directly from that. If you want to ask a question there, you can send me a message there. You can email me at bluebearsgames at gmail.com. Or if you need to, you can put a comment in the section below. I can answer any simple questions down there, or you can tell me how to contact you, and I'll go ahead and do so. And we can talk about it. But uh, I, now's the time I ask you, please do me the favor. Like the video. Uh, it helps me with my getting my videos out there. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I uh, don't see why you wouldn't. I, I do a lot of informative stuff, and even if I'm wrong, I admit I'm wrong. And uh, share the video out to somebody who, you know, may be looking for a deck like this, who may be trying to start playing Magic, uh, to somebody who might want to try to build a deck like this. You know, there's a million reasons why you could share out a, a video like this. It's quick, it's short, it's informative, so go ahead and share it out for me. Uh, other than that, that is my time for the week. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm just going to go ahead and say enjoy your weekend. I will see you all next week. My hope is that next week I will be doing a Commander Deck video. However, it all depends on what happens in the Cracker Pack series. So we'll just have to find out. Until then, see you next week.